Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo. The drop off. At the edge of the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, a brood of clownfish was getting ready to hatch. Marlin and Coral, the mother and father, proudly watched over their eggs in the grotto. We still have to name them, Coral said. I like Nemo. Suddenly, a barracuda appeared. Marlin rushed to protect Coral, but the barracuda's tail knocked him out cold. Marlin awoke to an eerie silence. When he swam to the grotto, he found only one tiny egg, injured but still okay. There, 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 it's okay, daddy's here, Marlin said softly, cradling the egg in his fin. I promise I will never let anything happen to you, Nemo, he whispered to the egg. From that day on, Marlin was very protective of his son, especially since Nemo was born with a lucky fin. It was smaller than his other fin and made him an awkward swimmer. When it was time for Nemo to start school, Marlin didn't want to let his son go. But Nemo couldn't wait. Dad, how old are sea turtles? Nemo asked on the way to school. Well, if I ever meet a sea turtle, I'll ask him, Marlin said. At school, Nemo climbed on the back of the teacher, Mr. Ray. To his horror, Marlin learned that Mr. Ray was talking, was taking the class on a trip to the drop-off. The very cliff where Coral and the eggs had been attacked. Come on, Nemo. Nemo's new friends sneaked away from the rest of the class. At the edge of the drop-off, they dared each other to swim up and touch a boat anchored nearby. How far can you go, Tad, one of Nemo's classmates, said to the clownfish. Just then, Marlin swam over. Nemo, no, he cried. Dad, I wasn't going to go, Nemo said, starting to explain. You think you can do these things, but you just can't, his father said angrily. I hate you, Nemo mumbled. Mr. Ray heard the commotion and swam over to help. While Marlin was busy talking to the teacher, Nemo swam to the boat and touched it with his fin. He was tired of his dad thinking he was too little and too weak to do anything. When Marlin heard Nemo's classmates shouting, he looked out toward the boat. Nemo, he cried as a driver swam up right behind his son. Swim, Nemo, swim, the kids called. Daddy, help me, Nemo cried as the diver scooped him up. But before Marlin could do anything, the driver and Nemo was already on the boat. There was no way Marlin could catch up. Marlin swam to a busy, busy underwater passage. Has anyone seen a boat? They took my son, he cried. Finally, a regal blue tang fish named Dory told him she had seen a boat. Follow me, she said. But Dory had a problem. She couldn't remember anything for more than a few minutes. When she turned and saw Marlin, she got angry with him. Stop following me, okay, she exclaimed. Suddenly, a big shark named Bruce showed up. Ooh. Bruce took Dory and Marlin to a sunken submarine. Inside was a meeting of sharks who claimed to be vegetarians. Marlin didn't trust them. But then Marlin spotted a diving mask, just like the one worn by the diver who had captured Nemo. What do these markings mean, he wondered aloud. I don't read human. Suddenly, Bruce was overcome with hunger. He chased Dory and Marlin through the submarine, snapping his jaws. 
The pair raced into a tube that held a torpedo. Marlin and Dory lodged the torpedo in Bruce's mouth to escape. The shark spit it out, and seconds later, it exploded. Meet the tank gang. Far away, a giant hand dropped Nemo into unfamiliar waters. Several friendly but strange fish surrounded him. Bubbles, Peach, Jacques, Bloat, Dim, and Gurgle introduced themselves. Nemo was in a fish tank in a dentist's office. The other fish were thrilled to meet Nemo, a fish from the open sea. Nigel, a pelican, flew to the window to say hello to his tank friends. The dentist, Dr. Sherman, shooed him away, knocking over a framed picture. Then Nemo learned his fate. The little clownfish was going to be given to Darla, Dr. Sherman's bratty niece, who had shaken her fist to death. Then Nemo met the leader of the tank, Gil. Gil noticed that Nemo noticed that Gil had a damaged fin too and felt a special bond with his new friend. That night, the tank fish held a ceremony to accept Nemo into their group. Gil named Nemo Sharkbait and shared his plan for how they would all escape from the tank, a plan that depended on little Nemo. Meanwhile, Marlin woke after the torpedo's explosion. He and Dory were right on the edge of a deep trench. To make matters worse, Dory accidentally dropped the diver's mask. As they swam down after the mask to darker waters, a glowing orb appeared. It was attached to a hungry anglefish. While Marlin struggled with the fierce angler, Dory used the fish's light to see the writing on the mask. P. Sherman, 42 Wallaby Way. Sydney, she read. After they escaped from the angler, Dory asked a school of moonfish to give her directions to Sydney. Marlin had already started swimming away when one of the moonfish gave Dory a tip. When you come to the trench, swim through it, not over it, he warned her. Soon, Marlin and Dory reached the trench, but instead of swimming through it, as Dory had suggested, Marlin convinced her to swim over it. They were instantly surrounded by a forest of jellyfish. How would they ever escape? All right, here's the game, Marlin cried. Whoever can hop the fastest out of these jellyfish wins. You can't touch the tentacles, only the top. Dory had almost made it through when she got stung. Marlin pulled her free, but not before he was stung too. Back in the fish tank, Gil gave Nemo swimming lessons while the two swapped stories. Gil got caught Nemo looking at his biggest scar. My first escape landed on dental tools, Gil told him. I was aiming for the toilet. All drains lead to the ocean, kid. Later, the fish began the first step of their escape plan. Get the tank dirty. If they could break the filter, Dr. Sherman would have to clean the tank, and that would mean removing the fish and putting them in plastic bags. While the bags were on the counter, the fish would roll themselves out the window to freedom. Coached by Gil, Nemo swam into the filter and wedged a pebble into in the rotating fan. But the pebble came loose, and Nemo was sucked toward the sharp blades. The other fish rescued him, but Nemo was terrified. The escape plan was ruined, and Gil realized he had put Nemo in danger. Keep swimming! Meanwhile, some sea turtles had rescued Marlin and Dory after their dangerous encounter with the jellyfish. Taking on the jellies! Awesome! Crush, a surfer turtle, proclaimed. Marlin told the younger turtles the story of his quest to find his son. Soon, 
The tale was being passed throughout the ocean from sea creature to sea creature until Nigel overheard the news from another pelican. Nigel rushed back to the dentist's office to tell Nemo that Marlin was on his way. Inspired by his father's bravery, Nemo grabbed a pebble and rushed over to the filter. He successfully jammed it into the fan. Shark bait, you did it! The tank gang cleared. They had two days until Dr. Sherman's niece arrived. Now that the filter was broken, what would the tank get dirty enough would the tank get dirty enough to need a cleaning by then? Out in the ocean, Marlin and Dory bid the sea turtles goodbye. Marlin called, Crush, how old are you? He couldn't wait to tell Nemo the answer when he saw him. Marlin and Dory swam and swam until they were lost. Dory asked a blue whale for directions, but they were sucked into its humongous mouth. Just when it looked like things couldn't get any worse, the water inside the whale's mouth began to drain into its stomach. Back in the tank, Nemo and his friends felt their luck was changing for the better. Without a working filter, the tank was a nice slimy green. Dr. Sherman swiped his finger across the inside of the glass. Crikey, he said with disgust. I'd better clean the fish tank before Darla gets here. The tank gang rejoiced. Are you ready to see your dad, kid? Gil asked Nemo. Uh-huh. Nemo cried happily. The next morning, when the fish woke up, the water was perfectly clear. The tank had already been cleaned by a brand new high-tech filter called the Aqua Scum 2003. The dentist would never have to clean the tank again. Boss must have installed it last night while we were sleeping, guessed Gil. The fish realized that their escape plan was ruined again. Well, what are we gonna do? Nemo asked, panicking. Not far away, in Sydney Harbor, a blue whale surfaced and spouted. Riding atop the spray were Marlin and Dory. Dory, we made it, Marlin cried joyfully. We're going to find my son. All we have to do is find the boat that took him. The problem was, there were boats as far as the eye could see. Suddenly, a pelican swooped down and scooped him up. The pelican landed on the dock, threw its head back, and prepared to enjoy its catch. I didn't come this far to be breakfast, Marlin cried. He and Dory stubbornly wedged themselves sideways in the bird's throat. Nigel, perched nearby, watched as the choking pelican stumbled around the dock. Nigel raced over and whacked him on the back. Marlin and Dory flew out of the pelican's mouth. As he flopped helplessly on the dock, Marlin said with a gasp, I've got to find my son, Nemo. Nigel couldn't believe it. He's that fish that's been fighting the whole ocean, he exclaimed. By this time, a flock of hungry seagulls had gathered. Mine, 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 they shouted. Hop inside my mouth if you want to live, whispered Nigel. Marlin and Dory jumped inside Nigel's beak, and they were off. The seagulls followed, but Nigel's tricky maneuvers led the birds smack into a boat sail. (sighs) 
The Great Escape. Back at the dentist's office, Dr. Sherman stuck a net into the tank and captured Nemo. Jump in and swim down, Gil yelled. The rest of the tank gang joined Nemo in the net and forced it away from the dentist. Suddenly, but suddenly, Dr. Sherman scooped Nemo into a plastic bag. Then he set the plastic bag by the tank. Roll, kid, roll, the others cried. Nemo swam, swam furiously back and forth, but the dentist spotted the wobbly bag and stuck it in a tray to keep Nemo from falling. Nemo and his friends were worried. Darla would be arriving any minute. Suddenly, a bell rang. Darla burst into the room. Fishy, 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 the dentist's niece cried. Dr. Sherman reached for the bag. Inside, Nemo was floating upside down, playing dead. Everyone in the tank cheered. If the dentist flushed Nemo down the toilet, he'd travel through the plumbing to freedom. But their joy instantly turned to horror when Dr. Sherman started walking Nemo over to the trash can instead. Just then, Nigel showed up on the window ledge and flew inside. The dentist dropped Nemo's bag onto a sharp dental tool. The bag began to leak. Nemo spotted Darla and played dead. Marlin peeked out of Nigel's mouth and saw Nemo floating upside down. He feared the worst. Dr. Sherman pushed Nigel back outside and shut the window. Darla picked up Nemo's bag and shook it. Gil knew he had to do something. The other... Tank fish launched Gil out of the aquarium, and he landed right on Darla's forehead. <gasps> Nemo fell out of the hole in the bag and onto a dental mirror on the tray. Gil flipped himself from Darla's forehead onto the tray. Tell your dad I said hi, he said, and then he smacked his tail on the dental mirror causing Nemo to fly over Darla's head and into the spit sink. Nemo escaped down the drain. Back in the harbor, Nigel dropped Marlin and Dory into the sea. Overcome with sadness, Marlin said goodbye to Dory. She pleaded to stay with him. He had become like family to her. But it was no use. Marlin couldn't stand to be around any reminder of his failed search for his son. He swam off and began his long journey home. Meanwhile, Nemo rode the rapids through the water treatment plant. When he finally poked his head out on the daylight, he was greeted by two hungry crabs perched on the pipe. Nemo quickly swam away to avoid their snapping claws. He had just missed his dad passing by. Escaping from the crabs, Nemo swam back toward the harbor and went off in search of his father. But instead, he found, him, he found Dory swimming in circles and sobbing. Dory and Nemo introduced themselves to each other, but of course, Dory had no memory of Nemo or the search he had been on to find him. Nevertheless, the two swam off together. Luckily, Dory spotted the word Sydney on the water treatment plant and suddenly remembered everything. She led Nemo back to where she had last seen Marlin. Dory described Nemo's dad and asked the crabs if they had seen them. They wouldn't talk until she threatened to turn them into seagull food. All right, I'll talk. One of the crabs cried. He went to the fishing grounds. Dory and Nemo were re reunited with Marlin in the fishing grounds nearby. Before they had a chance to celebrate, an enormous net swept by Dory, swept up Dory along with a, a huge school of groupers. Thinking quickly, Nemo said, let's tell every fish to swim down. Nemo swam inside the net to help. Swim down, Marlin cried, and soon all the fish had broken through the net. But where was Nemo? 
Dory and Marlin found him up beneath the net. Marlin was relieved when Nemo's eyes fluttered open. Dad, I'm sorry. I don't hate you, Nemo said. Oh, thank goodness, Marlin cried. And guess what? I met a sea turtle. They lived to be 150 years old. Weeks later, Marlin and Nemo raced to school. They had something, some amazing tales to tell, but most of their friends didn't believe them. Then Bruce and the other sharks showed up with Dory. Everyone's mouths hung open as the giant sharks greeted Marlin. Nemo swam onto Mr. Ray's back, and the class started to leave. Oh, wait, I forgot something, Nemo said. Nemo swam back to his dad and gave him a big hug. Love you, Dad, said Nemo. I love you too, son, said Marlin. And the end.